Welcome to the 2023 PDGA United States Women's Disc Golf Championships from Burlington, North Carolina. Grant Zellner alongside Sarah Nicholson. We have got some incredible golf for you this week coming from this incredible facility at Cedar Rock Park. We have so many players, women from across the nation and indeed around the world in all kinds of divisions. 21 to be precise, 340 players, Sarah, You've run into some of these players already. What's the vibe that you've been seeing? It's amazing. This is one of my most favorite events of the year. Um, I've been coming to this event since 2008. I mean, it's exciting to see. There were 68 women the first year that I played in 2008. So for there to be 340, all the smiling faces. I mean, women excited to get their first major, many of them. And this is the United States Championship. It's amazing. So much energy on these courses when you've got a pro-am happening at the mm -hmm. same time because the amateur players, of course, there's all this excitement. They are the future of disc golf. And then so often they become the gallery for the pro players and you get this extra boost of energy late in the day that is so much fun to watch and to be a part of. Chuck Connolly, the TD, and Tim Barr, the assistant TD, have done an incredible job setting up just four courses on one piece of property so all of us are in one place and ready to go here in North Carolina. Well disc golf is certainly a game of life and we're seeing a lot of players here at this event that are playing in those uh, age protected divisions. I, I, I want to say senior, easy, easy. senior <laughs> divisions but I almost feel like I shouldn't. <laughs> but they're playing in both amateur and pro levels. Mm -hmm. Some of these players started years ago uh, and stayed in love with the game all the way through. Others found the game, right, late mm -hmm. in life uh, after yeah. retirement or something. And then there are even a few who played, fell away for a while, maybe to pursue a career or, or, or uh, uh, had children or something like that, mm -hmm. and then fell back in love with the game. It's a game yeah. for life, and it impacts so many. Mm -hmm. Check this story out. I've always played sports and thrown frisbees. I love woods courses. That was always my thing. Some guy was playing, came up on us, and he had a bag full of discs that I'd never seen. And we started chatting with him, and he said, uh, there's a tournament this weekend here at Reedy Creek. And I just thought that was golden. I was, I'm there. I had one disc, which was my regular Frisbee, and um, played that tournament. It was me as an am and two pros, and I beat the two pros. <laughs> I was smitten from then on. This sport is great. I mean, the people are wonderful. That's, that's what's magic about it. Just kind of knew immediately that I wanted to get better and better at this, at this game. McDaniel had won Masters and he said, it is great. You just need to go ahead and play Masters. You know, it's wonderful being a, a world champion. So it, it was just totally different. I was just way more relaxed playing, the pressure didn't seem that, and I had a great time. And so then I was like, okay, been there, done that. Now I'll go back to playing open. In 96, the Worlds were in Indiana. I think I started off, was way, way ahead. And then we had a real windy day and I throw lightweight discs. Every stroke dwindled away. I don't remember how much I was ahead. I ended up winning by four strokes, but I know at one time I was double digits ahead. I haven't played since about 2012, so I just started again last August. Time just escaped me. I wasn't able to practice like I wanted to be able to. In the baseball analogy, I feel like I've gone back to AAA for a little while here. I'm just gonna go and have a great time because I can imagine, well, I remember how being at the Worlds feels. It's, there's just an excitement and it's electricity and I can't imagine it being all women. It just blows me away to see the number of women playing and the little girls, the, you know, the teenagers, it's just fantastic. I would, uh, I'm just so looking forward to where disc golf is gonna keep going because it's a, it's a great game and I'm glad to have been a part of it and to have come back to it.
and Beth Tanner's story, one of not just dozens, but literally hundreds that we're seeing this week at U.S. Women's. Yeah, that is incredible. She came to the Third Peak event that Tracy Jones ran in uh, Hendersonville, North Carolina, back in July. And uh, Donna Barr and I were playing on a car together, and we were like, oh, I hope we run into Beth, I hope we can meet her. It's really great having her back on the scene, for sure. She's incredible. More stories like that to come later on the week. But first, as we dive into day one action, let's take a look back at what happened last year. We'll look at the FA1 division, the future of disc golf, from 2022 coverage in Madison, Wisconsin. A battle to the last between several names that I know our viewers have heard of. Some of them already turned pro. Virginia Polkinghorn, of course, a well-known junior player mm -hmm. and an amateur champion. Uh, Virginia almost always in the mix, it seems, at these PDGA majors. She's got game in spades and a personality to match. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, her mom does too. <laughs> <laughs> Knocking down birdies all over the courses there in Madison, Wisconsin, and always putting the pressure on whoever else is in contention with her, often on that lead card. Alexis Kerman, uh, a champion from Missouri, mm -hmm. uh, turned pro, playing on the FPO uh, tour this year with the Disc Golf Pro Tour. Alexis Kerman, definitely in the mix last year in Madison. What, what is it about your her game that stands out to you? She's amazing. Uh, Alexis uh, is a two-time uh, collegiate champion. Mm -hmm. uh, her and Renee won back-to-back -back team events and uh, it's, uh, she's amazing. She throws so far. Emily Yale had what I thought was a really exceptional tournament last year because she stayed right there in the moment. Mm -hmm. It seemed like all week long, never let it get bigger than, uh, than her. She just, she just stayed consistent. And every time somebody like a Virginia Polkinghorn or Alexis Kerman punched, she was ready with a counter punch to just sort of offset that momentum. And I think that was sort of the difference maker for Emily. Oh, absolutely. And I'm excited to watch her play this year. She's playing in the FPO division. I remember what that was like when in, when in my first major and then moving up to FPO and I'll be rooting for her and always pulling for the underdog. <laughs> Just jumping into another new group of peers, I guess you could say. And she's actually already on the course, uh, playing the regulator course, which is a sort of infamous course here at Cedar Rock Park, a course that I don't know about you. I hope I get a chance to get around it before I have to go home after the event. Me Emily too. Yale, champion last year. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Other champions noteworthy from the FA1 division, you might recognize a few names. Christine Jennings there from a few years back. And who's that in 2012? I think <laughs> I think she's got some experience in the disc golf milieu, don't I, you? I might know her. <laughs> Several people on that list not only making a career as players in disc golf, but much like you, Sarah, making a career out of all of the other things that disc golf has become in terms of business opportunities, charitable opportunities, opportunities to grow the sport with different diverse audiences. That's what you're a part of there with Throw Pink. Really incredible to see what's going on with them. You can watch FA1 coverage all week long right here on the PDGA's YouTube channel. We'll have next day coverage produced by some pretty big players in the disc golf field at Central Coast Disc Golf. Mm -hmm. So make sure you tune in to that for next day coverage of the FA1 lead card. There's also going to be coverage of several other diverse groups. We want to show the love to different age yeah, groups. Yeah, let's go. Social love <laughs> to some AMs and some pros in the age protected divisions. So we're going to have coverage of a different card every day coming from one of those divisions. You'll have to wait and find out who we'll have for you as the course, or excuse me, as the week unfolds here on these four courses. We've got to head to a quick break before we come back and talk about what happened in the FPO field last year so we can remember where we've been and talk about where we're going this year in the FPO division at the United States Women's Disc Golf Championships. Next. Stay turning. Uh oh. Oh no. Ew. Wow. Alan so in bounds. That's exactly. She. I mean. Unbelievable. Yes.
Back with you from Burlington, North Carolina, home of the 2023 PDGA U.S. Women's Disc Golf Championships. Again, it's Grant Zellner and Sarah Nicholson. During that break, we were talking about the fact that as we begin to look toward the FPO field, so much of that gallery is made up of the players from all of the other divisions that are here. You were saying something about how great it is to see all these different groups together in one place. Yeah, it's really amazing. I mean, what I love about this event is it gives women a chance to meet other women from around the world and the country, and we can grow the sport together and just, you know, build a, just a great community. So this is an amazing event for the women's disc golf. And so often after all of those players scatter about the property and play their rounds, they come back along with their galleries just in time to follow those FPO cards, adding so much energy to that, energy that we are going to have coverage for you uh, on the Disc Golf Network to watch, and you'll get a chance to see exactly what the environment is like. Before we do that, though, we need to go back and see what happened last year in the FPO division at the U.S. Women's Championships. Welcome to Madison, Wisconsin and Elver Park, where the best women in the world will compete for the 2022 USWDGC Championship and that trophy right there. We head over to hole four, Valerie Mondejano putting for birdie. Cashes it in. Make it a turkey. Valerie Mondejano has four straight birdies going for a fifth. Six in a row for Valerie Mondahano. She's charging from the chase card. She's only three shots back. Speak up when something doesn't feel right with your body and catch cancer early. <laughs> Money from Haley. Short as it is. Miles down their direction. Got it. Haley in for the birdie. She's going to take a two shot lead to the 18th green. Valerie Mondahano trying to hit the long range birdie putt to give herself a shot. She is deep inside circle two. Got it. She goes into the clubhouse at 29 under, just one shot back of Haley King. She's going big hyzer over the right side. It's clean. That's it. Simple up and down, will win this tournament. Continues to improve and round itself off. We could very well see her on the podium yet again. And Haley sticks it close, you hear the roar of the crowd. Maria Oliva tied for fourth. And Haley King is the 2022 United States champion. Her first major title. Sarah, what an incredible amphitheater that was last year in Madison with players coming downhill for the 18th and the gallery in sort of a massive semicircle around the 18th basket, literally several thousand people. You and I were both in different places in that crowd and we heard that roar after Haley King's drive landed safe. Can you describe the energy? I mean, it was so loud. I think I can sometimes still hear it in my dreams. Like, <laughs> it was crazy, the excitement. It, what a shot and what a crowd. And a really big victory for Haley King, who's coming off of that victory last week as well at MVP. She's the defending champion here at the U.S. Women's Championship. You see there on the screen some other noteworthy champions from the past decade or so. Paige Pierce, a multi-time champion at this very event, of course, won't be here this year. So that opens the door for perhaps another first-time winner or a repeat winner. Yeah, that'd be great. Um, 
Katrina Allen won in 2012. That was her first major and my first major in the amateur division. So that that was really cool to be a part of that history. Did you guys yeah. get a picture together that day you, or anything? You know, we didn't, but you know, she <laughs> won the throw peak championship last year. So it was kind of full circle because she, we were amps together and she went out as a touring pro and I decided to become a TD. So it was kind of cool to see our worlds collide again last year. So. Noteworthy, of course, on that list, Kristen Tatar has won this championship as a player from outside the U.S. coming in and taking down the U.S. National Championship. She has a chance to not only win this event for the second time, but also to do something very, very rare in all of sports. Every sport that I can think of that has what they call the Grand Slam, winning multiple majors in one year. Kristen Tatar with a chance to do that this year. Can you imagine what that would be like? Well, I can't imagine being her and having that hanging over me. I hope she's not thinking about it at all because as a huge woman sports fan, I love stats. I love making history, and I hope it happens for her. She's going to have to play very, very well. She gets four opportunities to play the same track, which is a little bit unique sometimes. Had a four-day tournament to get to play the same track every day in a row, though they did get to do it last week at MVP. We're going to be on the regulator this week with that division. There's a reason why that <laughs> course has its own uh, awesome name, the regulator. Uh, I think a course has to have a certain uh, weight to it before you're allowed to give it a name, yeah. and oh, this one so. definitely does. Oh, yeah. They don't call it the regulator for nothing. Uh, I mean, how would <laughs> you describe the course to someone who perhaps has never seen it and they're going to see it on screen but you know how sometimes the screen doesn't translate everything through to the viewer so how would you describe the regulator to the viewer i mean as a semi-pro i would say bring a lot of extra disc and make sure you carve <laughs> out a full afternoon uh but it's these ladies are going to make it look easy i'll say that so. when professionals repeatedly in the press conference talk about hitting gaps it's a red flag when it happens interview after interview mm -hmm. they have to hit gaps every week so much so you'd think it's a second thought. Mm -hmm. But when they are all talking about it, that must mean that there's something really significant about the narrow lines they have to find through these woods on the regulator course. At least that's how, what I yeah. took away from that talk yesterday. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's what I took, too. <laughs> you can watch FPO coverage every single day on the Disc Golf Network beginning at 2 p.m. Eastern time, which is the time zone that we are in. The first round also will be streamed live on YouTube. So a chance to let your friends know that might not be as familiar with the world of disc golf. Uh, they get a chance to watch professional disc golf coverage for free on YouTube. They get one day at it before we're going to make them go and pick up a subscription, which they can get, of course, cheaper if they are a PDGA member. So all kinds of ways you can bring your friends into the fold here for disc golf. Yeah, I love that. I love that we're making it free and we're giving new people a chance to see it. I mean, that's what this event is about, you know, raising the women's field and the women's division. So I love it. As we mentioned, players are already on the course, and you can follow along with any division at PDGA Live Score, and you can go to it on, an, on the PDGA app, or of course you can visit PDGA.com, and you can find live coverage of this event for every single division, both professional and amateur, so maybe you've got a family member here in Burlington, North Carolina playing, you can follow them along hole by hole and see how they are doing, and of course you can join us later on this afternoon for that coverage of the FPO featured cards here on day number one. And starting on day two, it'll be those lead cards with others, of course, chasing and trying to make some noise by the weekend. Uh, the only final thoughts I can think of, Sarah, are perhaps to mention the weather. It's, it's warm, but not uncomfortably so. It's relatively calm. We do expect the chance for some bad weather, at least on Saturday. Yeah. And so it'll be interesting to see how that might impact players' strategy, knowing that scoring conditions might be pretty good on day one and two, and then pretty iffy on what we call moving day. I have heard, though, that these courses drain very, very well. Well, that's good to know. I mean, I think most of these women at this level are, are ready for the rain. I know a lot of the amateurs, they love playing in the rain. I was about so, to say, you know. I think some juniors are going to be thrilled <laughs> oh, yeah. if it starts raining. <laughs> right. <laughs> Hopefully the lightning stays away. As long as the lightning yeah. stays away, we can play through rain. And as hot as this summer has been for most of us, I don't think a lot of us would mind too much. Just a, just a shower here and there. But all in all, I expect a pretty beautiful week. Yeah, I'm excited. Okay, well, we've got to go. We literally have players on the course, some even beginning to come in from their first round. We've got to go tally some scores. We've got to get you some information that we'll share with you tomorrow when we're right back here previewing day number two. Sarah Nicholson, along with Grant Zellner, will see you out on the course from the 2023 PDGA U.S. Women's Disc Golf Championships.